Uh oh. Is this a comeback, Jason? No. The Escalade is back. It's doing similar thing, but it's it's running, right? It runs. So I guess we'll unload it. Seems to be some communication problems and we'll diagnose it. All right, so back to the Cadillac Escalade. So what was the story? Uh, last time we fixed the EBCM, the connector was basically halfway out, and the network was not continuous. We, we had 120 ohms, we are supposed to have 60. The car was acting all goofy. We basically diagnosed that, plugged that connector back in, back to 60 ohms, can was perfect. I drove this thing around for more than two days, and then the owner picked it up, he said it drove fantastic, it's never driven that well before. He made it to home to New York City, and then it started glitching. And it got worse, and now he says that every time, it basically acts up every time he drive it. He said he felt confident enough to try to drive it here from New York City to do a follow-up diagnosis. He made about 100 miles to New Jersey, and then the car was just going to limp mode. He said it was not drivable, called the tow truck, made it the rest of the way here. That's the backstory. So before he came out, I'm like, measured the resistance on the network. Is it 60 ohms? He says, yes, it's 60 ohms. Sent me pictures, so I'm not worried about that connector at the moment. However, the car, the symptoms now are, it starts up, it runs, everything's good. And then we took a little drive on the gravel lane here over bumps, and stuff just starts glitching. The, all the needles go crazy, the, it beeps, it chimes. It goes into limp mode eventually if that keeps going you know, for a long enough time. So there's definitely a problem with the network still, but it's different. So I'm suspecting a wiring problem of some sort since it happens usually on bumps. Sometimes it happens when the car is just running here. But same exact procedure. We have the scope, three channels, pin 6 and 14, channels 1 and 2, that's the high speed can. And then channel 3 is on pin 1 which is GM LAN or the you know the single wire network so right now everything's asleep let's start it up and see what happens um, before we do that we can just quickly do a resistance measurement with our ohm meter make sure it's 60 ohms just so everyone is on the same page and then we'll do actually run it drive it and see what the failure looks like 125 ohms so when I'm checking it right now the truck is broken so let's just turn the key on with the scope plugged in see what the network looks like if it looks like garbage and we have 120 ohms well then we're so something's open let's see will it start Right there, boom, 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 boom. See the needles are doing something weird. Let's stop the recording. Zoom in on this. There you go, stability track off. All kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, that's that's obviously garbage. How's the truck still running? I don't really know. Was the network ever good? It doesn't look like it. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. We're gonna plug the ohmmeter back in so it reads 120 and then we can start at the EBCM. That's where the problem was last time and see if, you know, if it's still the same issue, I don't know what to do. But the fact that we have 120, that's already a, a red flag there. All right, so what we see here is uh, further modifications. So basically, the owner he bought a new module where the plastic tab was not broken. This is the EBCM. And also the connector from a junkyard. Chopped the whole thing off, and now we have these. Now these are uh, sealed 
uh, what do you call these, Jason? It's uh, bee connectors. Bee connectors, okay. Now, if water gets in there, it'll touch the terminal, right? You can see metal in the, like, in the blue insulation. Yes. And then it's just electrical taped? Okay. So I, I thought these were more uh, weatherproof. Well, inside of them is gel. It's gel inside of them, okay. So basically, what I'm going to do is look at the ohm meter and mess with this stuff right here and see if anything changes. We can unplug the module without snapping any tabs, hopefully. Let me do that, and then if we still have 120, then we'll measure, you know, we actually see the communication lines are here, these are the, the two twisted pairs. So if we basically short out the two pins coming from the DLC, we should see zero ohms, and then we can measure the resistance on the second pair going back to the electronic suspension control module. We should see 60 ohms back there. So we're at 120 right now. Let me unplug this thing and we'll see if anything changes. All right, so check one. We got the connector unplugged. At the EBCM, I want to short out this yellow and yellow black. So that's on pins 26 and 14 coming into the EBCM. When I do that, this 120 should drop to zero. Okay, that'll check wiring integrity all the way to this connector to our DLC. So here we go. Look at the meter. Put that in right there. And right there, zero or 1.7 ohms. If I unplug it, 120. Okay. So I'm happy with this yellow and yellow black. Now, let's put the meter on the neighboring pair, pins 15 and 27, the tan and tan black, which are conveniently right next door. So just move one pin over here and one pin over here. Okay. Here's our meter. So I'll unplug it from the bob. And then let's plug it into the tan and the tan black. Hundred and twenty ohms. So if that connector plugs into the EBCM correctly, we should have 60 ohms on this network. What the heck is going on? So, Jason did a nice job with his splicing here. We have continuity. I mean, we could even leave the meter on here and pull on these wires at the splice. Let's see, tan and tan black. That's definitely good. It's a good connection. See, I'm pulling on that. Perfect. If I move to the neighboring pins. This one and this one. 120 ohms. This is the yellow and yellow black. Again, pulling on them. We're good. The problem has to be either in the EVCM or this new connector, which sounds insane. That's exactly what the original problem was. I don't know. Let's, uh, I mean, the problem is easily reproducible now. And let me make sure this is plugged in. Maybe spray a little something on there to clean off all this mud and this junk. I'm going to probably blow it out with compressed air. I want to make sure that this is 60 ohms on the DLC when, when it's fully plugged in. Then we'll take it for a test drive. If all those problems go away, then I don't, I don't know what else to say. But right now, the problem is right here in this connector or the EVCM. All right, so I have the connector blown out with compressed air, sprayed with deoxid. There's the EVCM. There's our meter. Let's see if that ohm reading 
actually goes down to 60 ohms when these pins make contact. There you go, 62 ohms. Wiggle check. That actually went in all the way, right? See, I still don't like this clip because it kind of doesn't really push the connector out by itself. There, we're back to 120. Go back in, 62 right there. So from here down to here is all 62. I like that. Let's put this back together. We'll put the little clip back on, make sure it's 62. Then we'll have Jason drive the hell out of this thing and try to make it act up. I'm assuming it won't act up. All right, here we go. Scope is plugged in, turn the key on. I expect this can is going to be absolutely perfect. And that musical chime is because uh, we have a, a big Tesla touch screen installed now, so they're like the speaker is a little off, but no problems with the network right now. Let's put it on plus or minus 10 volts. And if you zoom in on this, absolutely perfect, just like it was when it left the shop last time. I mean, is this perfect? What you can do is actually decrease. People have been asking for uh, scope videos. Just drop down the time base. See how nice and clean those packets look now? Because we have more points for a smaller amount of time. I do apologize about the glare. You could also jack up the sampling rate at you know, a longer screen, but that will just eat up more memory per screen. So, I'm happy with this. Let's log into Cadillac. Delete all the codes out. And Jason still doesn't believe me. He thinks it's going to act up. I'm like, you drive it, make it act up, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> because that... We just saw that there was a problem, we corrected the problem, I don't see why it would still be acting up. And I don't know why that problem was even there to begin with. The connector looked fine, his wiring repair is fine, why was it open? It was kind of dirty I guess, maybe wiggling it and cleaning it with some deoxid helped. Just a little, a little frustrating to have that happen. So let's try smart scan and see if it'll actually do all the modules or if it won't be able to do the class one stuff. We did amp bows. Huh, it's working now. The last time it, it was not working when I plugged the dongle through the uh, the breakout box. But it seems to be happy, so I'm going to do a full health report, clear all the codes out, take this thing for a drive. Alright, so we didn't even start the truck yet. We reproduced a customer complaint. Look at the network right now. Keys on. It looks like garbage. Let's back up. Back up some more. It was good, and then it got messed up, like hardcore. So screens 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all the way through 24, that's messed up. So I'm going to save that, and then we're going to again turn the truck off, put it to sleep, do a resistance measurement, and see what else on this network could be doing this. So right now the key is on and the car is going crazy. You see that's our signal so I'm going to shut it off and see how it goes to sleep and I 
Okay, I bet if we measure the resistance right now, it's going to be back at 120 because this line here is at zero now. So it's the network is open again. But how could that be? Okay, we're up to 130 ohms now. Oh, it's it's not very consistent. It's not steady. It's 124. Then it was up to like 130, and then less. What if we shake the car around? You're getting the driver's seat, Jason. Hop in the hop in the driver's seat. 129. One thirty. So we've got an open. Let's unplug the EVCM one more time and see. You know, one thirty is actually too high even for half of the network. Because we were getting about one nineteen with the EVCM unplugged. Now we're up to one thirty. So there has to be another issue here somewhere in the upstream leg because we're measuring at the DLC. Okay, so now we're at 135 ohms at the DLC. That number is too high. And that doesn't and that means that it's not just uh broken there, it's actually broken or bad con connection between the DLC and even the first resistor. The second one's completely offline. So again, we're going to unplug this silly EBCM. Uh oh, so something changed. Now we're at 109. You didn't touch any doors or anything, right, Jason? I'm just going to unplug this connector slowly. Why did it change to 109? Oh, it's being st stubborn. Okay, 220 ohms. That's a bad reading. We should have like 120 with this EVCM unplugged. Perfect. So now we can at least narrow down the real problem to whichever side of the network we're on. And we're going to use a second meter to probe. Let's see, the yellow and yellow black are the ones coming from the DLC. And that would be this one and this one. Uh, find the right pins. We have 218 ohms there. We have 0.7. How does that make any sense? Let's move to the bottom. Two. We should have 120 on at least at least one of these circuits. Okay. So right there, 120. That's a good reading. That goes back to the electronic suspension control module and the ESC. So we know our meter is good. Now I'm going to move the leads to. If I disconnect my meter, so we're basically have two ohm meters on the same circuit. Is that okay? Well, n not really because they pr do produce a small voltage and that might interrupt your ohm reading. So now we have 320 on that one, 360 on this one. So if I unplug one of them, right there, 230. From here, all the way to the ECM, okay, from the EBCM to the ECM. Now if I unplug this one, and plug this one back in, point four four, so 430 ohms. Does that make any sense? That's going through the breakout box through the DLC.
and the terminating resistor is inside the engine control module. Keep that in mind. Okay, now we're at 450 ohms. Right? 45 kilo ohms. Oh, God, this doesn't make any sense. 0 0.49 kilo ohms is 490 ohms. This is showing 45. Okay, I don't know if I can trust this meter. That's another variable. Two hundred sixty-eight ohms, and this is now point nine kilo ohms. Unplug this. Four hundred fifty ohms. Unplug this. I'm gonna have to get a notebook. Plug this back in. Four hundred eighty ohms. Okay, so that's going to be a problem. Now we need to do find where the break is between this connector and the electronic or the engine control module. Now keep in mind, at the DLC, we're also measuring a high resistance. So let's look at the wiring diagram. Okay, so just using one meter, if I'm measuring at this connector going upstream towards the DLC or through the breakout box at the DLC, we get exactly the same reading. So it's gone up to well, close to 400 ohms. Now it's back down to 155. So if I attach the, my other set of leads, and we're just using one meter for reliability, I just don't want to have the meter be a variable. Just using one meter, about 150. So it, it does fluctuate once in a while, but it's still broken. So now we need to figure out, look at the wiring diagram and see if we're measuring here and at the DLC and the number is the same and it's too high, where could the problem be? So what did we just see under the truck? If we're measuring from the EVCM, measuring the resistance across these two pins, these go here, no transfer case module, come here, through the VCIM, up through the uh, junction block and then down here through the BCM through the TCM and measuring this resistor right here what we're measuring is too high it's not 120 it's like 150 200 300 it's changing we also measured at the DLC and got the exact same result so what is that shortcut that means we're not worried about VCIM we're not worried about the EBCM or this junction block. Now we're from here, BCM, TCM, ECM. One, two, three modules. So we're cutting, cutting it down. Uh, where's the easiest place to check next? And remember, we should leave an ohmmeter right here. And if we touch anything and it changes, we'll know we're close to the problem. That's going to be very key. So don't just go unplugging, you know, all these modules and then oh you know it came back to life well that that's not it's not necessarily a good approach like right now it's broken 156 they're measuring 156 right here so there's BCM now TCM um, that's probably right next to the engine computer So if we can get to the BCM and un just unplug this and do a resistance check right here, then um, if that's 120, then we're suspecting something here. But at least we eliminated most of the network. We're down to three modules. Okay, so the voltage is doing, I'm sorry, the ohm reading is doing something kind of weird. It's jumping around. When that happens, there might be voltage on those lines. So just turn your voltmeter to volts. 8.6 millivolts, that's okay, so it's still asleep. We're still a little high. Should be 120, we're like bouncing around. 
Oh. So here's the BCM on the diagram. Always go back to the diagram. So we have the tan black, tan black coming in 16, 17, and then on 8, 9, tan black and tan leave to go to the TCM. Okay, so here's our BCM. And the tan black and tan tan black wires, the two pairs are at this blue connector. I am going to unplug it since I know the problem is not here. When I unplug this connector, we should see our ohm reading go to infinity. It'll be open circuit. There we go. Okay, like 4.5 kilo ohms. Okay, so now you can come to this connector and do our ohm readings right here. We can even plug the EBCM back in. Now this is going to be our separation point. We're going upstream or downstream of the BCM. All right, so now I'm, we have the BCM unplugged. Now I'm measuring the resistance on these two pins going through the TCM, through the ECM. 122 ohms, rock steady, no changes whatsoever. Interesting, right? That looks good. Now what, what should we do next? Um, plug the EBCM back in, measure from here going all the way back through the EBCM to the terminating resistor back there. If that stays at 120, then we're suspecting this body control module. Now remember, this was replaced and programmed by the dealer, which we don't know if that was done properly or not. But, I'm trying to think here. And we can't really run the truck without the BCM plugged in. That controls everything, pretty much. So, this, this is absolutely rock steady, like 122. No jumping around. At all. So if we plug this in and our ohm meter on the bob shows something crazy, then we know the problem is in this body control module. Because that way is good. The other way, the EBCM is unplugged. So that's not even a variable right now. So let's just plug in the other meter to 14, 16. Yep, that's fine. So if I plug this back in, that meter doesn't read 120, then the problem's gonna be right here in that body control module, which again is this stuff is unpredictable at best. Okay, so did it wake up? Go to voltage, 22 millivolts. It's changing a little bit, 27 millivolts. Zero, 19, 22, 26. Now we're measuring across the two pins. You want to measure from ground to pin six, for example. 215 millivolts. You put a scope on there, make sure it's completely asleep.
49 ohms, 50 ohms, 51, 52, 53, 54, is so resistance readings are only valid on systems that are not live so when the network is asleep you think that the little residual voltage wouldn't affect your resistance readings but it can it's one thing to watch out for right now it says 50 ohms and why does it say 50 ohms when it should be 120. We don't, I don't have the EVCM plugged in right now. It's pretty weird. All right, so I have the scope back on the breakout box. Just pin six and 14, and we have the EVCM unplugged. The BCM is plugged in, so we're just seeing what if there's any like ghost voltage on this network with just the front part of the tree plugged in. And I was noticing that this thing just sits here and then something really weird happened. Obviously it's not going to do it now, huh? The voltage just went kind of like... Here, I'll show you back here. Right there, right there. Like what? What is that? That's not a good can signal. That's just noise. Let me save this. We're close to the problem, but not exactly crystal clear yet. What is causing this kind of stuff?